Hello, um, welcome back everyone, and uh, I'd like to show a brief summary of the previous game. I played with White against International Master Rainmaker. We had the clean defense after knight uh, 6 castles and uh, knight a 4 And I played the sideline that I like to maintain the queens on the board with some level of complexity. Some degree of complexity if we if we compare to the main lines where the queens get swapped off. So yeah, e6 is the main point of my play. Now I play this interesting move my g5, which I analyzed. I had a really tough time to recollect my analysis, but I somehow managed to find all the moves that I uh, wrote, and uh, it happened to me sometimes even over the board where I. I checked some line, I forgot it, and then in the actual game I came up with a move that later on turned out to be the right move from my file. So I can't really explain this phenomenon, but uh, uh, I just managed to find my moves. And now after f4, white should be slightly better, and I think one of the good moves for black would be rook e8. C6 is a mistake. And I couldn't exploit it. Um, my, my right move, probably the best, was rook takes e6 here. Uh, with the idea that after bishop e6, rook e6, queen f5, there is a g4, and I trap his queen. I missed it in the game. I'll show it in a moment. So, in the game I took and played knight e6 and this c4, blundering queen takes b1, but reaching a winning position nevertheless. And I'm two pawns up. And uh, to see how this turned out, feel free to watch the previous video. And uh, if you already saw it, then uh, I don't have any more uh, remarks uh, regarding the position except uh, what you've already seen. So I feel like overall it was a decent game from the opening and middle game point of view until I reached the time pressure. Should probably play faster. It's the conclusion. Every single game, I better start applying it. So to demonstrate how I could trap his queen. So after b takes e6 here, for example, instead of knight takes e6, I could have played rook takes e6. Okay, I thought it would take a bit longer to find an opponent. Anyway, rook e6 would have trapped his queen. You feel free to check for yourself. We are playing John 27. I played an Imtso Indian in my previous games. Maybe it's about time to play the Grunfeld in this one. And uh, yeah, this is the Grunfeld. Probably my main uh, variation throughout my entire life. And uh, I have to admit, I don't remember the variations here as much as I would like. But yeah, my opponent is playing my pet line that I showed a few few videos ago. Now I can demonstrate what I believe to be the best way for black to equalize. So normally c5 makes sense, but then after knight d5, queen d5, rook c5, it becomes complicated. Might be okay for black, but the complications are unnecessary in my view. Uh, the move I like is just knight xc3 which is almost paradoxical when white doesn't play e4 and now c5 b takes c5 and if i'm not wrong now it was queen takes check one, and the uh, king takes d1 and now bishop e6 attacking the a2 pawn if i get the pawn back it should be very close to equality usually now they play some move to protect it like a3 if i'm not wrong and then I think I'll go knight d7. b3 is a move as well. And now I can go knight d7, I can start with rook d8 to check. Um, can I give a check? Check. See, it's a good start. Yeah, now I can develop the knight maybe to a6. Attacking this pawn and preventing b4, rook a8. So I'm 
threatening to get the uh, tone back. I don't see a way for him to defend it. Yeah, he's trying to give it back while weakening my own pawn structure. Not so sure how to respond. Looks like a decent uh, choice by my opponent. Okay, I think I'm gonna compromise here and take with the rook and allow him to weaken my pawn structure a bit. And now it will probably play e3, to which I intend to answer with rook d1. And uh, if I move the knight, he will be able to finish his development and get a good position with a better pawn structure, so I'll pin his bishop along the first rank yeah in that case by the way it might have been a draw after king c2, rook a1, king b2 back so let's have a look, now g3 makes sense as well ok I'll try to get rid of my weakness, I'll play c5 and c4 exchanging my weak pawn and see if I can do something about it. Hmm. I think that um, yeah, now e three. So this guy is quite sophisticated. So first he prevented rook d one, and now he went e three. Night before, but it's a good move. Uh, I think I just wanted to go away from the bishop's attack and uh, yeah, now maybe to play something like bishop g4 and uh, pin his knight. My immediate idea is to take and play rook d2 check or knight d3 check in some cases. And I think uh, I have some decent uh, initiative to compensate for my weaker pawn structure and uh, yeah one sec I grab a glass of water yeah so he too is trying to exchange some pieces check I'm forking the king in the pawn seems like I'm a, a head material but now we reached an endgame and his king is a little bit more active so hmm. check 94 check looks like a decent move if he goes king to c4 my idea is to play bishop takes f3 and knight d2 check for king the bishop and the king so you should probably go to c2 or d3 yeah and now excuse me now several options come to mind knight d6 for example just solidifying the situation my next idea is to bring over the king to the center should be better for black yeah okay the knight ending Exchanging these two pieces should be in my favor, but I'll ask him politely to do it under my conditions. Probably bishop d3 is a good move for him. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so now this might favor me because uh, his pawns are a little bit weaker, and I'll bring my king to the center. And Botvinnik, the great Mikhail Botvinnik, said once that knight end games are like pawn end games the player who has the better king usually is the one with the, an edge and if you have a pawn up in a knight end game it's uh, quite a big edge and uh, it's sometimes very often enough for a win compared to rook end games for example where sometimes you can be a pawn or even two pawns down and it one might, you might still be, be able to make a draw so you yeah, here I'd like to find the right way 
maybe g5, taking some space and this square from his knight. Uh, he might play g4 at some point to um, fix his pawn on g3. He takes, I take it back. He'll probably go back to e2 now. Yeah. I'll go knight e4. So at this moment, and fixing his knight to the defense, and tying this knight up, and he's trying to get some counterplay for a good reason on the other side of the board. Uh, I think I can play, I can afford to play e5, taking some squares away, and if king a6, my idea is to go knight to d2. And uh, not to allow him to win material for free. I want to take this pawn now. Had I played it in the previous move, he might have had b3, b4 and grabbing with the king. Okay, now I have a nice choice between king c7 and uh, taking on b3. Also, king c6 is interesting. Mm. Not sure if it's good, I just think it's, uh, it has some potential. Yeah. I had an idea here to go knight a5, and now if he goes king b8, then king b6. I'm a little bit afraid of uh, knight to c3 at this moment. Yeah. I should go f5 probably, preventing knight e4. Yeah, this got needlessly complicated. So. I'm not sure. Oh yeah. Time warning. I missed this one, but after a7, I'm still okay. Knight c6 check. Okay, I'll play faster now. Check. 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 White resigns. My opponent resigned, and probably for a good reason. I'm two pawns up, and this pawn uh, will just uh, advance until he has to give up his knight. The uh, position is probably completely winning. For more uh, details and a brief summary of the opening and this game, feel free to, to see the next game. And... Uh, Thanks a lot for watching so far, I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this experience, I know I did, and uh, yeah, keep watching the videos and uh, I'll see you then.